your ankles are your first shock absorber, where's your next shock absorber? Where's the next part of the body designed to absorb force? Have a think, let's see if you get it right. Okay, so who said the knee? Who's guessing that the knee is next shock absorber? Put your hands up. You're wrong, it's not the knee. The knee is not a shock absorbing joint, it's a shock transferring joint. It should transfer force through the body. It sends it up, shouldn't hold on to it, shouldn't cushion it, it should send it up. And if it's sending up, where does it go to? Where is that next shock absorber? So hands up if you said the lower back and the discs between the vertebra. You're also wrong, it's not the lower back. We're led to believe that the lower back and the nice thick discs that sit between the vertebra are made to absorb shock. They're not, they're designed again to transfer the force from the feet, first off from the ankles absorbing it, taking it up the body, through the knee, through the hips, through the pelvis and the lower back. Believe it or not, your second shock absorber the area of your body designed to absorb force is your rib cage. That's right. That structure that takes up the majority of your torso, the structure that we labeled, in my opinion, incorrectly as a cage, the rib cage is designed to absorb force. It looks, if you take a look at the image put up there with the video, the rib cage looks like a shock absorber. Try and think that each rib, one on, rib, one on rib on one side, connects to the opposite level rib on the other side, and together they form a ring. They form a circle that goes all the way around the trunk. Now, at each level of the rib cage, every one of those rings has the ability to move independent of the ring above and below it. Now, when you think of it like that, the way I like to look at the rib cage is a bit more like a spinal spring. That area of your body works very, very similar to the shock absorber on your car, your motorbike, your bike, whereby the force that goes through it is absorbed as the ribs move closer together and then recoil and release. Now this is crucial. It's crucial because if, like the majority of us, you're spending most of your time in one posture, you're likely to be compressing, dropping down on one side of your body, you're therefore squashing your spinal spring, you're squeezing your rib cage down on one side, and you do that for long enough, it wouldn't take long, most days of the week, most weeks of the month, most months of your working life, after a while, no different to any other spring and any other shock absorber, you're gonna lose the ability for that area to recoil, to put you back into a posture that allows you to absorb force the way that you were designed to. The knock-on effect of that is that your body is gonna to have to try and absorb force in areas that it wasn't designed to. You're gonna end up with your low back pain, you're gonna end up with hip pain, you're gonna end up with knee problems. The areas that you really need to consciously correct and work on mobile ankle joints and a good open rib cage, expanding the rib cage, getting that stretch back into the side where you're compressing it most. And the easiest way to do that, believe it or not, is to work on breathing. Let's have a look at that in this next video. In the meantime, feel free to send in your questions. The details are along the bottom of the screen. You've got the email address, you've got the website. Like share the video if you know someone that would benefit from hearing this, if there's someone that's whinging in your ear complaining about back pain, complaining about knee pain, anything that they've got a problem with, please share it. Share the wealth of the knowledge, your understanding that hopefully you're getting about how really simple the mechanics are of your body. And if we don't overcomplicate it, we can do a lot to help ourselves. Okay, next one is gonna be all about what you can do for that rib cage to make it function better. See you then.